All right, hello world. Welcome to this day. Oh, I'm standing, so I'm in a different place. Uh, that's fine. Whatever. Be cool. Got like move it up just touch. So I should put in a note to. That's fine. It's okay. Crop. Um, but we will put in a note. Okay, it's open. Uh, make sure camera is set up for sitting or standing. All right, I also got a different mic set up, so um, hopefully that's okay. I'm gonna bump it just a little bit, yeah. So half a decimal, let's see if that, uh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, just a little more. All right, we'll see how that goes. Hello. Whatever. Uh, give that a shot. So we'll see uh, what's going on. 8.2 is the decibels down that we did. So, all right, we're good. So Twitch stuff, um, or sorry, yeah, Twitch stuff. I guess that's what we're doing. We're doing ideas from Twitch. Uh, I can leave that there. So, yesterday, uh, in my Hugo website, uh, no, sorry, not my Hugo website, my um, tools website, uh, made this little button to uh, create a journal entry on my Hugo site. Um, and what it does, and it's already done it for the day, but we'll just show you real quick. Prod. I guess I can put that where you can see it. So this is my Hugo directory um, where we put all the content. Um, and if I can find the J's, MCFG, HI, J. So here's the journals, right? Um, each one just has a single entry in it. Um, I'm gonna rename this for one second because when I hit this, um, when I hit this button, you'll see what it does. So this button makes a directory and then puts an index.md file in there and um, uh, launches an editor. And so let me fire up Hugo serve so you can see it real quick. Get a second to fire up. There we go. Uh, so right now, there's one journal entry that's sitting right here, um, which, yeah, the directory, if you look down at the bottom, has the dash after the eight, uh, after 28. So. Now, if we do this, it makes a new page, fires it up for me, and I don't know why it didn't hit it. Oh, it just, it hadn't actually rendered yet um, by the time it fired the URL. So it just makes this template, that's cool. Cause then I can go through, uh, do my edits or make my entry and then blah, 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 blah. Close it, I'm done. So. It's like, it, like it's just a lot nicer than having to like go and do Hugo new journal date slash index MD and then go into the directory and then find the file and launch it. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of just like reducing friction for doing stuff, especially in the morning. Like, so when I'm ready to write in the morning, like I get up and the first thing I do is write. So it's just like, I just want to click a button and then go. Um, so that's the first thing. So the two things that I do like that right now are the journal entries and then the stream notes. So I haven't opened stream notes yet for this one. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a similar thing that I want to do. So actually, let me do this real quick and put this back. There we go. Uh, yes, I'm playing in production, but it's all on GitHub right now. So, or Git, not Hub, GitHub, but Git, my local Git repo. Um, so the other thing that I do a lot is stream notes. Uh, I'm starting to do a, a set of stream notes for every stream that I do. And I want the same thing, because like right now what I'd have to do is, uh, I've got an hn command that's for Hugo New that sets me up a little bit, but I have to do it and then it launches and it's fine. But like, I'd much rather just click a button and not have to worry about it. So I'm gonna, well, actually the first thing I'm gonna do, now that I think about it, I wanna solve one issue. So in that journal, here, let's get into the code. 
By the way, you're listening to different music than me um, because I'm listening to copyrighted stuff. So I have no idea what you're listening to right now. Um, I hope it's good and I hope it's not too loud. It doesn't look like it is. Uh, I hope it's not too soft and annoying. We'll figure that out. Uh, also, the mic's in a different place. So we'll see how that goes. Same mic. Uh, STH gets me my Hugo site to edit. I don't know why those are red. Probably because I've deleted stuff. It's kind of making me nervous. I'm guessing I've deleted stuff. Oh, I moved a bunch of stuff. I renamed a bunch of stuff. Um, I All my stream notes used to be called live coding dash whatever or live writing with the date. And I've now just named them all stream notes. Um, so I'm sure that's what's going on. Um, we'll look at the Git repo in a minute. But where's I headed? Um, oh, actually, what I want to do is bring up my tools site, which I call Launchpad, which I think I'm gonna rename Tools just because I call it Tools whenever I'm tweeting about it, because like Launchpad, that's for me, not for like other people wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we have this launcher and Make Hugo Draft Post is the one that makes the journal. Uh, so what I'm gonna do real quick is, let me find the path. And it's kind of hard-coded a bunch of this stuff, right? Because it's a really simple thing for me. Um, so here's my post directory. And let's see if I still have, yeah, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna make a new one. Content dev. I just want to be able to fire something to that place. So now when we go to our local tool site and hit make a draft. It opens the file and here's in content dev now, here's the file uh, and then fires it up. Um, does it, is it opening the, where's my code? Oh yeah, it actually redirects. That's cool. It redirects. I forgot about that. So it's actually redirecting to the place where the where it's gonna go. So my live preview. So it op so it opens the the page that I put my code in or my writing in, and it actually opens the the HTML page as well. Um, that's why a second ago it hit a 404 error uh, because it created the the markdown page, and it immediately opened the web page that's going to be there, but Hugo hadn't finished taking the markdown page and, and populating that slot. So that's why we got that thing, uh, that 404. No problem, like just quick refresh, that's fine. Like theoretically you could actually put something in there to wait and like look for the file path and then wait until it's open, which I don't know, maybe it's someday. Um, but like right now, that's fine. Um, I don't know, those 404s would bug me, uh, we'll see. So I got this running. But the thing that I, that still bugs me about this is when we run it, um, make sure I've cleared it. Nope, not yet. It won't, it won't do, the journal one won't go more than once. So if it sees a journal file there, it doesn't do it again. It doesn't make a second one. Um, but like, if I pull this down here and you see when I click, so do it over here so you can see it. When I click, it makes the file and opens the file in Sublime Text for me, but it keeps, but the file doesn't come up front. The browser still stays up front. So the first thing I want to do is solve for that. I want to get, I want to get it so that this file pops forward. Um, and I've, been, I, I've tried, I've, I've done several things over several days, over several hours to try and get that to happen, and haven't been able to do it yet. But I think I got another, I got a, potentially another approach here. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm working, I've got a content dev coded in here, so I'm not worried about it. Um, this is one of those, I, everything I'm working on is simple enough that I don't need to spend the overhead of like building, you know, dev stage prod. It's fine. Um, the, the amount of time that I'd have to do that is not worth the potential savings I'd get because it's all sitting in, in Git anyway. So I just back into stuff and it's all static files. Um, but so here's the question is how, so this right here, 
So it makes the directory and then it writes the file contents into that file path. So this is what just makes the file right here. And then what I'm doing is a shell execute for open to that. And I've tried a bunch of stuff. Um, PHP open, call external commands. Oh, I didn't say that. this works. Yeah, so open works. Oh, I didn't do all the ones that didn't work, did I? Mm, hang on a second, I might have those somewhere. Uh, actually, so if we do localhost. Oh yeah, so it's seeing two of those. I gotta ref like sometimes you gotta restart the Hugo. Um, if you delete something, Hugo tends to not uh, to leave it sitting there. Let's see if that works. There we go. Oh wait, that shouldn't have happened. There we go. So far, I had it cached. Everybody's caching. Uh, working on my local tool site. Whoops. Why did that download? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Audio visual setup. You go at ed editor launching. I may have put. Nope, not there. Yeah, here's some of the ones that didn't work. So let me do this. Which one is this? 27th. Oh, actually, wait a minute. The one from the 27th. Hugo edit launcher. I can edit. And again, that doesn't pop up, but this shows me this makes it go. So here's some other things that I tried. So I was using X and then I was trying to fire up Sublime Text. Um, Bim bash the open, like, these are just a bunch of ones that didn't work. Um, this works, this does not work, this does not work. These didn't work either. Um, I was going through trying to like fire it into Python. But what I thought I might try and do is fire into Apple Script and see if I can do new finder to front. So here's here's the first thing I got. So I've got this command. So a while ago I was messing around trying to get the finder to come to the front, and this is the little Apple Script that I came up with. That if you run off the command line. Um, I'll show you right here. Finder comes forward. So the question is, let's make another uh, scratchpad file here. What happens if we do this? Let's move the Finder forward. Actually, we're going to move Actor forward. What happens if we do this? Uh, iTerm wants to access control Sublime Text app, allowing control to provide access to documents and data in Sublime Text and perform actions within the app. That's fine. I like iTerm's got everything, so yes, it can do Sublime Text. Execution error. Can't set frontmost to true. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, so hang on. Apple script. You can tell it to activate. Activating apps and app scripts sometimes. Whatever. Let's see what this one is. Activate application. Set current application. Oh, I don't know what this does. When was this? 2012. <laughs> Uh, where is script editor? New document. Uh, I wonder if Sublime Text has a, uh, it doesn't look like it has a library. Let's actually check and see if Sublime Text has a library. You are that's Sublime Text. So you have an Apple Script library? It's not scriptable. Oh, that's fine. Uh, 
so tell application finder activate and tell. There you go. Now how, there's a different way to do that. Is that it? Cool. So let's see if that, I'm just gonna piecemeal through this for a second. So I just wanna see if I can get that to work on the, um, on the command line, it should. It should be exactly the same thing. So let's see if that works. Yep, okay, so we fired that up. Now, here's the real test. Does Sublime Text get in there? Whoops. Okay, okay, we might have solved it. So this is gonna open And then, how am I gonna do that? Uh, I guess I'm gonna escape, do escapes the single. Now we'll escape the doubles. So that and that, and then we need to escape here, whoops, here and here and do that. Okay. Cross your fingers. So let's clear it. Prod content dev, let's get rid of this. And then let's come here. I'm gonna just kill all these right now. And then let's try it. Came to the front. I've been work I've been trying to do that for I don't know how long. That's cool. All right, so draft for stream notes for date. This is how to open the file in Sublime text and then bring it to the front. Funk. So I'm not actually opening a uh, a full on. Oh man, it's a giant font, but hey, you can see it pretty well. Uh. Does that need to be bigger? Probably one bigger. Um, okay, I'm gonna put this back to dev, or back to prod. Oops, how to get it back to prod. I'm not actually opening a stream notes file yet because I wanna actually do it with this once I get this working. Um, just clean up white spaces since we're in here. Um, so I, I'm going to test it once in production real quick. So let me get rid of this content dev. We're going to go here. We're going to get down to our journals. We're going to go to the 28th. Whoops. Save. And then from here, and by here, I mean here. There we go. Oh, it didn't open. Oh, yeah, it went to the went to the front. So here's the journal. That's actually back in the back because this is it brought Sublime Text up front. Um, but like, so that opened both the files for me, and I can write and then look at it. That is exactly what I wanted to have happen. I am happy with that. Uh, I've been I've been looking for that for a little while. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's fix this. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna rename this one back to here. We're good. I'm gonna restart the Hugo.
the Hugo, um, the local site. Cool. Uh, might as well commit all that, right? Um, Wood Allen Prod. Wood Allen Prod? Allen Wood Prod. Uh, I think I moved a whole bunch. Of, yeah, I moved a whole bunch of stuff too. That's cool. You can't see that, can you? Hmm. Move content to stream notes and opened opening blind PL swan text for journal. I'll try to bring it to the front, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, why is that still got a star? Oh, because I added my, I moved my, wait. Is that where my save icons are? That's in the wrong place. Uh... Is that? Well, that's where those were coming from. I couldn't find those images to save my life. Um, okay, this can go away. How did those get moved up? I don't know, that was weird, whatever. Uh, cool. Sweet. So that got my journal going. And then the other, so yeah, the other thing about it is I, I can click it forever and it's just going to open the existing one. It's not going to make new ones and it's not going to overwrite it. Um, oh, I didn't think about that. I can actually use that if I need to make edits to it. Um, oh, another thing. So I posted today, um, I think I've already got this. Uh, YouTube get set up here. Yeah, so I've got these edit buttons. The thing that I didn't think about is I used to have them up here too, but I was only looking at that on the local site. But of course what happened is when I deployed it, the drafts didn't go out, but the edit button did for the other one. So I nuked that real quick. Um, so I need to set up so that when I'm on the local site, I see those edit buttons. And when I'm not on the local site, I don't see them. Or when you're in prod, you don't see them. Uh, that's another that's another thing that'll happen, uh, but that, that got me. Um, I got a bunch of stuff I need to finish up. I've been posting all the videos that I've been doing, and so these are trying to get all the show notes in for them, or the stream notes. Um, so I gotta go through and kind of get those all leveled up. Uh, so cool. So now what we wanna do is actually make a stream notes thing. So let's start with that. Uh... So up until twenty three men set up to open ST from journal launch. Start it. Start making it's funny because you'll see this. Uh, start making You can have like flashcards or whatever. Um, I guess this would be it. Uh, start making stream notes. Button. Let's call it 24 minutes now. All right, so what we're gonna do is on our index page, right below our make journal button, which is somewhere under Hugo stuff. Let's find Hugo stuff. Hugo local, Hugo stuff. We're gonna make a new button. And so I'm gonna do this where I just kind of make stuff. Um, stream notes. 
in a way that breaks, as if kind of like I'm doing testing. But so this is gonna break as soon as I do it, because it's gonna hit a 404. But then I'll make the 404 go away. And then the next thing I'll do is kind of walk through the process of like getting a file out there and, and going through it. Um, though in this case, largely what I want to do is copy and paste my existing code. Um, um, stream notes, but, I, but there will be a couple differences that we need to do. Make stream notes. All right, so press this to so make stream notes, right? So now I just need to make this page. Uh, let me just do that from Sublime Text. So inside launchers, new file. That was a lot. Echo here. Save that, do that. Come back here, refresh here. Okay, good. That's just a tone test, making sure we got it. Um, and actually, I'm gonna do one other thing before I get too far. So this this is called make Hugo draft post. I wanna make a journal, I wanna call that journal draft. So I'm just gonna change the names real quick. Make Hugo. Journal. Draft. So I'm just gonna flip the name. Um, Launchpad, prod, launchers. Just make sure if it pops and does the thing. Yeah, okay, I trust that it's working. Um, and so I've got the stream notes now, which is going here. Uh, and close that off. I'm gonna open my journal draft. So I'm just gonna look for stuff that I can duplicate. And so date's cool. Or sorry, setting the time zone's cool. The date we're gonna need, because that goes in here. Um, that date string gets used in the, somewhere. I figure that one gets used. Post date numbers. That's this, where's post date string? Oh, journal for, yeah, there, so that's like, so September 28th, 2012, 20, whatever. Um, I'm actually going to reverse those just because that's the order that they get used in. Uh, that's fine. So actually here, let's do this. I'm going to move it so I don't mess with it. We're going to throw this in here and we're going to comment everything out below that to start with. That needs to stay there though. Um, so the, this is going to change a little bit. This is going to be stream notes for whatever. And then I want to have pound live coding after it. Draft is chew. This is going to be live coding. Ooh. So sometimes this is live coding. Sometimes it's live writing. I still want, I just want to call it stream notes though. Well, am I going to have, I'm probably not going to have, mm -hmm. I'll deal with that when I get there. Um, Again, first thing first, just get the get the first one out. I'm very Alabama today. Um, so we got this. Journal path slug. So this, so this is the path we're gonna drop the file into. Um, and so I use this 
journal path slug because I need to use this in a couple different places. Specifically down here, I want to link to it. So this is going to be, we're going to call this stream notes. Path slug. And it's going to be stream notes. And we're going to change this. And that, find and replace might have been better for that, but that's okay. Stream notes with a date string. So, and now I can, so this is good for this path. I'm just kind of going line by line here. Post file is the post directory, which we just made, plus index.md, right? That's good. If the post file exists, this is where, okay, this is gonna change a little bit. Um, this is gonna be fine for right now, but I could have, so I'm not gonna have multiple journals in a day, but I could have multiple um, stream notes in a day, streams in a day. So, and you can see that a little bit if we just look at the content um, uh, directory. So, uh, journal, like there's only one journal entry per day, but stream notes, Here's 10, 10-2, 12, 12-2, 13, 2, 3. And then I don't know if I'm gonna do name stuff. I don't think so. That's a little overhead and that's like search engine optimization stuff, but like I don't I'm not really that into that anymore. I don't need that. I'm not that's more effort than I think I want to put into that. Um because again, I'm I'm looking for ease of friction and I'm like SEO is not gonna make a giant difference with my stuff, I don't believe. Um, so. Let's see. Um, so I guess we can put that over the side, yeah. Um, let's close that. Get that backwards in the middle. Oops, get that backwards in the middle. Um, but for right now, just to get this working, I'm gonna do the same thing um, that, that I'm doing in the journal. So all this is fine. Because if the file exists, or if the file doesn't exist, I want to make the directory for it, and I want to then make the file with the content. So this is cool. All that's good. Uh, and then my favorite things, right? We're gonna do that, and we're gonna do this. So now, let's see what happens. Uh, hey, we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. We're gonna make a new one. We're gonna do this. We're gonna click on stream notes and see what happens. Bring it forward. There it is. Stream notes, September 28th. Coding. True. I love it. So I'm gonna do something. I just wanna test this. This is a test. So what should happen, I'm gonna save that and close it. What should happen is if I go back and hit it again, it won't overwrite that file or make a new file, but it will open it. There it is, this is a test. Okay, so that's what's happening. Um, I tried that in the journal one. I was like, I had a pretty good idea that that was gonna happen. Um, awesome. I'm still not gonna start putting stream notes in this one because we're still in development. Um, so I don't wanna put stuff in here and then accidentally blow it away. But this is a good, this is a good start. Uh, so now, so that, I mean, that's, that's the first one. If, if I only was ever going to do one stream a day or wanted to only worry about the first one and then I could manually do the other ones, that's fine. But now what I can do, well, let me commit that. Um, whoops. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm on the wrong site. That's funny. So, step one, prod, content, uh, stream notes. Oh, here's something different. I did it with an underscore instead of with a dash. Oops. All right, uh, so the other thing I'm gonna do right now, we're gonna push this back to that content dev directory. 
just because we're still like we're still we're a little bit in development here um and then we need to change this to a dash All right now we're going to go find the right directory there's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff there right yep So we're gonna, now when we test it. Oh yeah, it actually, it'll still bring up the right file. Maybe. 404 is not found because we're not writing to, to that directory. That's fine. Um, but why didn't it pop up the file that time? No, oh, because it, it couldn't. Content dev doesn't exist and it can't make, it's not making, um, so I'm using a make dir command, but the make dir command is targeted for this directory inside content. When I moved it to content dev, the make dir command isn't set to, um, to make parent directories. So it, it tried, it, it looked for content dev, couldn't find it, so it couldn't then make a directory inside content dev. So that's why that busted. Um, there's probably a way to switch it to doing the parent directory, but this is, this is fine, like it's a known location. Um, I'm not, I'm okay with this approach. Um, assuming this works. So this should work now, right? There we go, now it's bringing up a file. Um, and so we should see inside content dev, there's our stream notes, there's our index.md. All right, now what we need to do is, so if the file doesn't exist, we want to do that. But if it does exist, we want to, ma we want to make the dash two version. And we're going to need to start looking for this up here because really what we're looking at is the directories. And yeah, the stream notes slug is the directory name. So we need to make a determination like, okay, so here's where, here's what we need to do. We need to be able to, I'm gonna hard code this real quick just so I can verify that this is the place that we wanna do it. Uh, if I can get to the finder. Uh, I have Selena Gomez, Bad Liar on loop back in the background right right now. I just, the beat and the rhythm of it's just, it's a good, keeps me going a little bit. Uh, so your content dev, stream notes, right? So this is what we built. So it's got that date string. Can you just do a dash there or is that gonna freak it out? Dash two. Uh, and then we come here. Go back here, do this. Okay, pop the file, dash two. So that's what we need to have happen, is the first time through, no number on it. Well, you could do it. So the simplest thing to do would just be to always append a number. And like, part of me, I really, in the past, would have really wanted those to all be exactly the same, like always have a digit there. But I kind of like looking at it without the, because most of the time I'm not gonna do multiple streams, so I kind of like that. And then having the two is fine. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm gonna go after this instead of, because it, it would be a little bit easier to do dash one, because what I would do is you would just create a loop and you'd start with the number one, you would look for the directory and if the directory exists, you do the next loop and put a two there. But if it doesn't, you just put the one there. We can do the same thing. I don't think it's gonna be that much more complicated, but the first time through, we'll just look for, without the uh, without the, with the number. Um, 
it'll add it's a little bit of complex complexity because we have to say on the first one don't add a number but on all the sub subsequent ones add a number uh so how are we gonna do that the let's see so i don't know how to do loops in php um so what's the what's the right way to do it so if we set oh actually we may not have to make that complicated a thing so So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set this. All right, for just a minute, I wanna drop all this stuff. I don't wanna do anything. Um, and I wanna echo what the post directory is. I just wanna see this. Because right now, the goal, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with a goal that we want just to see if I can get the string to happen. And the goal that we wanna have happen is a three, is all that stuff with a three at the end of it. It's not gonna happen right off the bat, but I wanna see, I wanna, uh, I wanna have the output to look at. So let's go here. Yeah, so here's, here's our core path. And then what we're looking for, right, is this dash three. With the dash three, because we've already got, uh, whoops, don't need that. Hey, thank you, output script. Syntax still freaks me out. So we've got one, we got, we got null one and then two. Um, and then we're gonna get to three. So let's do, where I'm headed with this is I can look for a path. So I want to set this. I want to set this first. This may not be the most efficient way to do this, but I think it's going to work. Um, we're going to look for a PHP while loop. While well, condition is true, could be executed, right? Yeah. So it can. Okay. So it can. It can definitely get the scope, so it can get to the X, can look at X, and then do something with X. So we're gonna set we're gonna set up our parameters up here. And then while any space there? Maybe not. Uh PHP file uh, directory exists. It may be the same thing as file exists, yeah. File name exists and is a directory, otherwise false. But if it just if file exists, checks whether a file or directory exists. So we can use file exists to look for a directory. So what we're gonna do is while a directory does not exist, we're gonna increment a number and then make another loop and see if we can get it to go. So um count equals one. And what's, what might be neat about this, I think, if the logic's right in my head, is the first time through, we're manually setting this post directory without, without any number on it. File exists, post directory. So the first time through, we, we've manually we've manually created this path, and the slug is really the important part. Um, the path just is what we pin the slug to, but the slug's what changes. But so we've we've got this slug. The first time through, there's no number associated with it, but we have a counter number set to one. But if that exists, what we're going to do is we're going to increment counter number. Where's that while? 
uh, yeah, just with plus plus, that's just gonna increment it. We're gonna update the slug with a dash and then the counter number. So then it never sees one because we, we did it without one. Then it makes it two, then right here, the counter goes to two, and then when we make it, the two shows up. And then we build the post directory for this time, so that the next time through the loop, it looks to see if it's uh, if it's still there. I feel like there's a probably a better way to do this. Um, but what I wanna do is also do this, echo post directory. I can just copy that. Got that. All right, so let's see if we can think about what's going to happen. So we've got we've gotten this directory where nothing's there. Sorry, that directory with no number, and then the number two. So I think so. File exists. Oh, I got to make the directory. Otherwise, this is going to go for a long time. Um. Wait a minute, hang on. So if it exists, go to the next one. But the problem is if I make the directory here, when it loops back to the start, that directory is going to exist. This this would be an infinite loop if I did this, if I put a, if I put the make directory here, um, which we don't wanna do. Uh, okay. So if the file exists, so, okay, let's do it the other way. If it doesn't exist, oh wow, I'm wrapped up. Um, if the file exists, do the next loop. I need Selena to go down just a little bit in my head. She's a little loud right now for this kind of concentration. Like I really like having music as a pad, especially the same thing over and over again, but like sometimes a little too loud when you gotta focus a little bit. Um, yeah, now it's the right level. Also credit to Talking Heads for the baseline. So if it exists, it's going to print and then it's going to jump. Why am I stuck? I don't think so while loops not going to be the right thing. We want a for loop, I think. Let me Cuz somehow somehow we need to bust out of the loop. While While the file exists, I feel like it needed to do what doesn't exist, but then the, it would choke on the first one. While it doesn't exist, while it exists, what am I doing? All right, uh, I'm just gonna start writing code in a second just to make something happen. Um, so we, we've got three slots. Something's here, something's here, and nothing's here. Slot one, hey, file exists, go jump up. Slot two, jump up. Oh, slot three, it's gonna, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. So when it makes, that the third time through yeah you don't put the make door here okay that's what was throwing me that's when you so that's when you would bail on 
Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So the make dirt goes right here. I'm assuming this is gonna work with PHP. Um, so I'm making the post directory, I'm gonna loop through it, and every time I'm gonna set the directory. The first two times that directory is gonna exist, so it's gonna come through and it's gonna remake the directory. But the third time through, the directory, or the file, which is the directory, won't exist. So the loop won't run. So nothing's gonna happen to the directory path and it's gonna, it's gonna fall out of the loop. Which means if we put a make dir right here, it will catch the last one of these that got updated, which should be a three. Everybody cross your fingers. Okay, I kinda wanna do it from a fresh page. All right, let's just look at everything. So that's two, that's three, and let's hope that it gets there quickly, all right? So it printed one, printed two, made three. Try it again. There's four. Okay, there we go, that's the logic. I, when I tried to make the directory in here, that would have been an infinite loop because and also it wouldn't have worked right because the file had already existed there. Um, also, I just jab my monitor. I'll do that. I still don't care about fingerprints on monitors now. I used to be so much against that, but then we all got phones with glass on them. Um, so that, that puts us in the right place. We make the directory and then we can just make this. So we don't need this if statement anymore because we're, the the conditional logic happens in the loop. Um, post file path. I do need to make the post file path. I'm gonna go ahead and just set that here so they're both happening at the same time. Um, So we can get rid of this. Oh, look at this. I think we're close. Right, so we're gonna make our post file path with our contents. We get to open it, we get to fire sublime text, and we're gonna go back to the slug. I just uncommented a bunch of code. Let's see what happens. I kinda want one space in between those right now. I don't know why. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one. Right now it's one. Uh, all right, it's so a new thing, because we're gonna bounce. And let's just see what we have. So we're at four. I'm gonna expect five to happen. And I'm gonna expect it to pop up. It's gonna launch the browser window and that's gonna 404 because we're in the, the redirect is pointed to prod, but we're writing into dev. So that, that's gonna bust, but it's fine. There's the coding. Oh, actually, it's not going to redirect because we were at, we were spitting out. Um, once you start writing out to an HTML page or to an HTML request, HTTP request, you can't send a header redirect. So it stopped. It's fine, whatever. Um, but there's our thing, live coding. And I don't want like live coding part four or five or here, whatever, because who knows. Um, this, this is what I'm looking for. And so that should be at a five slot. Yep, these were empty, right? Because we were just messing with the directories. Or we hard-coded those. So now we're going to delete all of these in that one. Yes. And we're going to come back here. And we're going to give it a full test. So stream notes. Why didn't it open the file? Oh, maybe because it was already open? I don't know. What just happened? Didn't write our file. Hmm, something may be off with the... If the file exists, which it doesn't, so it should fall straight through. Did 
that one more time. Not sure what happened there. Ready? Still didn't make our file. Okay. What happened there? So we set our stream slug. We set our path to content dev. Count to one. Post directory does not exist. So none of this happens. We make the post directory. Oh, wait a minute. Post file path can't be made in the while loop because that while loop doesn't get executed the first time. Oops, our ladder's fine now. So this needs to be here. Because the because that while loop never got executed, this variable never got set, this file path ever. So it didn't know where to put the file contents. Um, which I wonder where it put the file contents. I need to get error messages turned on in PHP. It's something I should do. Um, let's give this a shot. I'm optimistic. Ready? Wait. Did we clear out all the rest of the jump? No, we did not. Do it. There's our file. It'd be nice if PHP showed you the, or whatever showed you the thing. Oh, you know what? I wonder. I'm not gonna mess with that yet. I'll make sure this is working. Yeah, it went to 404. That's fine, because we're not in the prod thing. So here's our directory. There's our file. Hooray. Now, question is, if we do it again, do we get a second one? There's a second file. There's a second directory. There we go. Now we can make them. That's it. Just set it to prod and we'll test it. And I need to set it to prod in two. Oh, so here's what I should do. So this is... This is some duplication is what this is. So um, we're gonna reduce some duplication here. Maybe. Uh, root posts. Site root. Root -er. Site content -er. Root content -er. Like this, I'm far enough along that I want to get like some like early. I don't worry too much about names, but as I refine stuff, like I'm at the point where I want it, I want that name to really make sense to me. So root content -er. here. And if I was really gonna do this. You could you can make a little function to do that just so you always just build it. Um, so just because I changed that, I'm going to leave it at dev for a minute, um, and we'll do two tests. So dev already has one and two in it. Let's see if we can make three. There's our file. There's three. There's our file. Sweet. And then now, just to make sure, because one is a little bit different. We're gonna get rid of those. We're gonna try one here. Made a file. File with nothing. And then just one more time. Oops, don't save. Just because, you know, keep testing. There's a file, comes to the front. There's our two. We're good. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna go into prod, don't save. Right here. 
So again, I wanted to redu uh, remove that duplication, so I just had this one place to edit. Um, and like, this is ugly code, like, or this is ugly, like with the variables and stuff, like, I don't know, it just, it feels weird somehow. Um, but I don't think I've got a lot of dupes going on. Oh yeah, there's like, so setting this slug, like it's the same thing. So you could, you could make a function to do that stuff so that you, cause like there's duplication right here, right? Stream notes, so like this is a string and this is a string. Um, the format is kind of duplication, but like, so like, you, whatever. Um, this is working. This is cool. I'm good with this. That's going to content. So let's see now. So I don't have... I'm going to break it back up in the ears a little bit. That music's good for y'all too. Um... Content. Stream notes. So I'm on the 28th. So this should just make a new one for today. I did three apparently yesterday. Um, I think we're ready. Everybody cross your fingers. Let's do it. That looks good. There's a file there. There's a file there. We're looking at the file already, but you know, so I'm gonna close that back so we get it sized right. Um, that did it. Uh, and now I can actually take the, so like we're live now. So there we go. This is how to open file in Sublime Text and then bring it to the front. PHP. Yeah, so up to 33 minutes. Yeah, whatever. Uh, cool. Start making the stream notes button. Got it. Uh, and then we'll just test one more. Like sometimes, I guess. Oh, so it it's looking, it's doing a markdown parser. And so it wants a thing there, which I think is a strike. No. I don't know what it is. Whatever. Can you escape that? You can. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Um, so we'll make one more, which we don't actually need right now. Comes to the front. Oh, I love that. Uh, close that. We should see a new window open. Yep, with nothing in it. Because here's our original one. There's this one. Now if we go here, we should see stream notes. Whoops. There you go. There's the two. Which you don't need, so I'm gonna get rid of it. So now I just gotta not click the button twice. But that if I you know, worst thing that happens, it makes a new one. Um That's slick. Oh, okay, that's super cool. I'm happy with that. I really like that. Uh it's all good. It's all good. Uh, now I can actually leave these open. So I'm gonna... Can you open with BB Edit? I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, if I want to, I could maybe open with BB Edit. The reason I do that is... Um, I'm often opening and closing a whole bunch of Sublime Text windows and it kind of comes up and down and all, all over the place and often I end up closing the one with my stream notes in it. So if I throw it to a different application, um, but I wouldn't need to do that on stream. Um, for example, right there, I just closed it. Um, ah, but here's a cool thing. Ooh, I had a bunch of stuff open. Uh, cancel. Where's this? So it's cool, so if I get a local host, here's my, oh, it's got a bunch of stream notes because it was, again, the, um, 
the local host builder doesn't catch deletions. Which kind of surprises me, but whatever. Uh, so here we go. And now I can edit it, and that brings it. Oh, good. I can. Mm hmm. Uh, let's put it this way. This didn't work. Got an error about line text not having a front option. Sweet. Uh, ooh, I need to apply styles to these. Sweet. So I can edit, see, I love being able to edit those. So I can close this now. That's cool. We got you captured. Uh, here, let's go ahead and strike this. I'll move it down later. Um, data headlines. Okay, yeah, so that's what I wanted to do for that. That's awesome. Um, oh, what was the other thing I was going to do just a second ago? Ah, 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 in that edit, that was exactly it. So when I click that edit button, it didn't bring my sublime text up. I want that to happen. Like, I really like that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So let me go find out where that is. Whoops. Let's try getting into code, maybe. What do you think? Code? Uh, so, so the launcher. Launchpad. Whatever. I think that's the launchers, right? Open Hugo file. Uh, yep, in the status bar, open Hugo file. So it's this one. And then if we come here and we tell, and we grab this line and we put this line right here. And then we refresh a little bit. Oh, brings it to the front. That's so cool. So now I've got a Hugo editor, um, like a, a quick Hugo edit button, right? So if I'm, I'm on the site and I'm like, ah, I want to edit this page. Boom, brings it up. I'm good to go. And it moves the page to the one that I'm actually working on. That's so cool. Like. Oh, I'm really happy with that because like doing all that stuff manually is just tedious. Like, and it's just like, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And you kind of have to think through it a little bit. And it's just like, it's static. Um, but this is, this is way better. Um, so I should, I don't know, maybe I'll write this up one day. Um, so might as well commit it. Get status. And... Uh, I'm just going to add it all, again, because this is just my stuff. Um, finished stream stream Oh, I'm on master, too. Even better. Stream notes launcher updated Editor to bring to front. Whatever. Log in. Uh, fatal pass. What? Oh. Let's. Well, let's do a couple things. Let's do that. Let's do that. And let's do that. <laughs> Better. Might as well check out a branch, right? Um, people are gonna look at this and be like, we're never hiring that dude. I will do better if I need to be hired. Definitely, probably. Uh, let's see. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to do, okay, cool. So now we're gonna get into the, so that's, I've been working on these kind of pieces to make it easier for me to do stuff. Cause like I get really like bumper card in the head kind of stuff when I'm trying to like do a thing and I've got to like bounce around on it. And it's like, I really like, I really like Hugo but the editing is kind of a pain and like having to get to it is kind of a pain and like all the other stuff. So I just made all that go away. Um, and that makes me more likely to do it, makes it easier to do, it's smoother, like everything about it's better. Um, and so now it's like, and I've got, like I'm, I'm set. I, I don't really have anything else. The, the last one that I, that I wanna do is edit, is put my edit buttons back up here for those posts. Let's try and do that real quick. Um, oh, see, yeah. So actually, I'm gonna go into BB Edit real quick and get those show notes open, show notes, whatever they are. Um, we're prod content. Stream notes. 28th, index, go. Oh, you know what I could do? Uh, yeah, so if I, if I figure out how to do, ah, if I figure out how to open from BB Edit on the command line or, or do this kind of open, then uh, I could actually have two edit buttons, edit in Sublime Text, edit in BB Edit. Again, just, it's just a little bit of time spent making things better and easier and nicer. So like, even though I will spend more, I've spent more time than I will save probably on the site in a year, we could have the site for multiple years, but also like it's nicer. Like it's not just about the time, there's quality of life and quality of life is way higher. So that like it's already paid for itself just in terms of how nice that is. Um, so so blind text, make the frontmost, start making stream buttons, cool. And then now what we're gonna do is um, one, 12, we're on 13, start updating edit button. Cool, um, it's a giant font. That, I mean, that looks good on the stream. That's probably where I should be with Sublime Text, but it's not that far off, is it? Uh, yeah, so it's a little smaller on, the, on those fonts. Not awful, still fine. Uh, uh, what am I doing? This, this, yeah. So it's not that extra little bump wouldn't be bad, but like, that's just that's a lot for me to look at here. Like, it looks oh, it looks better on stream though. Make a compromise. Yeah, we'll do that. It's fine. Uh, can you turn that off? Whatever, it's fine. Uh, yep, let's do this. I guess we can make that bigger too. Oh, <laughs> that's craziness. So, edit buttons. How do we make... See, I'm in between because like this is, the, I don't, like I don't need to edit them most of the time when they've been posted and I could find them. And I wanna do this YouTube responsive stuff. But no, I'm gonna finish this. This'll, this'll be the, 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 the cap of the tool set for me. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that. I like that. Where'd my thing go? There it is. Uh, so let's bring Hugo back up for our Hugo site. And now we need to figure out, so I know where, uh, I thought I knew where, where is it? Nope, uh, layouts. So under default here, this summary, I think, oh, see, it's just, it's a giant, giant font. That's gotta go down a little bit. Um.
Yeah. So this is this is where this edit link comes in. So this is Hugo's if statement. So if equals and like Hugo in this, I'm still adjusting to this, but the way that Hugo works is you don't say if draft equals true, you say if equals draft true. So like you, you move the, um, the comparison to the second thing and then the, the two values that you're comparing to the third and fourth things. Um, there's a page detail that comes in here that's this dot draft that identifies if draft is true or false, right? And this is where, um, well, we can just edit one. Uh, oh, popping to the front is so awesome. Uh, so here's, here's draft true, and that's where this comes into play. So if this is true, Add that edit button, and it also it also adjusts the class of the thing and adds draft in front of it. Um, those are that happens here. It's the same thing, draft true. But so right now that edit button only happens on drafts. But really, what I want to have happen is I want it I want it available everywhere, or on all the posts, but only when I'm in dev, because when I'm in prod, I don't want edit buttons hanging out there. You can't actually edit anything because the edit button just comes to a local file on my on my machine that's just a relative path. So it just doesn't go anywhere. It's just a broken link. Um, but I don't want the broken links and I don't want a big edit button up there. Um, so now the trick is to figure out how to make this conditional based on if you're in, based on the environment that you're in. Because I think when you do, so when I'm, when I'm launching what I'm really doing here is is going Hugo. I've just got this is I've just got my HS is alias to Hugo Hugo serve dash D. So serve dash D. So this just fires up a local. It, it builds a Hugo site, takes all the content, takes all the raw content, moves it into HTML. Then it launches a a, a local web server and serves up that those flat files. And then dash D says, hey, when you're when you're doing that build, anything that has draft true, go ahead and build those out too and put them in the mix. Um, and so that's why when you see uh, my local host site, you see all these drafts. Um, but when you look at, you know, the, my production site, uh, you don't you don't see the drafts. You only see those. Um, let me try that. Is that going to work? No. Okay. Um, Uh, so I've updated my icon. Oh, I should make it transparent. Should I? Yes, I should. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I should at least make it a circle. I don't know. I'll do something with that. Uh, but yeah, so that's why, you know, enjoying the non-creative here. See, that's, that's one that isn't a draft. But this one that is a draft aren't there. So the question is, how does it know? Here's what we need to find out. Hugo serve. Just want to look that up for a second. Hugo server. Hugo server flags. All kinds of stuff. Oh, we can do all kinds of stuff. Wow, I'll have to look at some of this stuff. Options inherited from parent commands. Hugo. Yeah, so Hugo does the build, check config. Uh, print Hugo version and environment info. Oh, Darwin AMD64 or whatever. Okay, gotcha. I, it's not the. I was wondering how I was going to do that. Um. High performance search for version, new mod, list import. Yeah, so how, where are content management? Where are page? 
management review organization. So I'm just trying to see if there's something that I can just kind of bang around into that finds um, front matter. But that's not what we want. So I could do some searching right now to try and find it, but I'm kind of I'm kind of just looking around to look around. Um, I may stumble on a thing, I may not, but like this also just helps me like see what else is in the uh, in the environment, what's available. Um, format. Okay. Get get page. Also, page or site variable. Okay, um, you can deliver site-wide params in your configuration. Here's a. This could be a way to do it. Because what we could do is set up a development config file, and then pass. How about we have to do that? Out to your own. I, I'm gonna try that. I just wanna I just wanna kick around a little bit and see what else is here. Um no count words, that's cool. Go param, okay. Emojify. Exist, first flip. Someone with a message. All right, cool. Get you on escape. You go human eyes. It's human eyes. I have an argument with the first capital. Okay. Capitalize this stuff. Image functions and index intersect. Jsonify. Last. Plus and equal. Or identify. Past stuff. Plane of five, plural, whoops. Pluralize. Prints. Range, read file, read dir. Safe. Sequence sh shuffle, singularize. Split string. Strings, a bunch of string stuff, cool. Template exists, time, transform, trim, truncate. Unique, you're all, you're all with um, variables. Variables, site variables, page variables. Site map, get Hugo variables. Hang on a second. Look at this. Uh, let's see what this does. Also, I don't know how to print. I guess you just draft in title. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't. Let's just do this. Uh, H4. Let's see what happens. I don't think we're not doing anything. Development. <laughs> yep, that Hugo server flips the environment of the real to development. So now, uh, did I set a time? Sorry, I definitely added, but I did. Uh, so now for this if statement, if I do this, was it just development? It's gonna explode on me right now. Oh, it all went away. Equals that. Edits everywhere. 
There we go. Uh, edit. Brings it right up. Close. We're gonna put this here. So, uh, just make sure, so edit. That edits a draft. Right, cool. And then here's an edit. Oh, it's so nice. When it, of the file, that's perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's it. So, oh, sorry, the last thing we need to do is verify that if we deploy that, the edit buttons don't show up anywhere. So, the, so it, it should, so we shouldn't see any difference. And actually we'll leave that window open. I'll try, um, if I remember to do it right. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna go HD, which is my Hugo deploy command. Oh, you know what, we wouldn't, I, got, I need to change something to be able to tell what changed. Oh, access denied. Oh, I'm in a wrong. Um, I've got a way around that. I need to solve that. I've got too many Amazon accounts, that's what it is. Um, bear with me. Uh, where's that? That's over here, where's my phone? Oh, so let me actually add that to my notes while I'm thinking about it. Um, Twitch checklist. Uh, switch MFA account to green. Uh, to Greenfield. That way I just won't have to log back in. Uh, so I've, I've, I've got a, I use MFA and I've got a process that I go through that allows him, that sets up MFA credentials for me. Um, Cause with MFA you can get temporary credentials. So I can really go get temporary credentials. Um, To, uh, to get this to work. Because the command line needs access to temporary credentials. Uh, that's this one, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one. Now, if this has a better look. Uh, Hugo deploy. Hugo is deprecated or removed. What? Page.hugo is deprecated or Use the global Hugo function? What is that? Oh, it's still not there. Come on. What's going on? Oh, because I did it to the wrong. Too many, he says. I've got a solution for this that I need to create another account for that I can wrap around with that'll make it easier to do. Is this right? No, it's not right. Is this right?
Oops, typed in the right place. That helps. warning hey it's sending files okay I tried to send it to like five different places uh, so now the trick is I don't have anything easy to be able to show other well actually yeah so if it these should be the same I can't prove to you that it actually updated oh it's still well so I send the file, I send my deploy twice. Um, so I, I host it on S3 and I use Amazon's AWS tools sync to push the files. And there's an option in sync that you can say that says only send uh, files that have a size change, which goes much faster. Or you can say send everything. Um, and like, because I build these files, it, it like, I think it does a comparison of the timestamps. But every time I run Hugo, it builds the files, so the timestamps are always in front of S3. So it's going to send everything if I don't do that. If I don't, if I don't flip that size only. But the size only seems inconsistent. Like it doesn't seem like it always sends stuff, even when I know a size has changed. Um, so I I send it once with a size only, and then I send it immediately thereafter with, uh, and then clear the cache, and then send it immediately thereafter with the full thing and clear the cache again, just because it. Sometimes that makes it go faster. Um, I think it's updated, but we should see, yeah, it's identical. So our, our, our edit buttons didn't go up, which is good. So we solved that, cool. Uh, that's really cool, I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how, uh, notes are still kind of new to me, I'm still gonna have to figure this out. Uh, sweet. Okay, so that's gonna be it for that part of it. I've got I've got my full tool set. I've got all my edit stuff going, so I can get to it. Oh, I could add one here too. Ah, it'll be all right. I'll do it later. Nah. Oh, Cause see, what I could do is I could add an edit button here. I'm just gonna do that offline. Um. Cause it's, it's just copying that. I don't know. Is it though? Uh, let's do it. Let's finish it up. Layouts. Nope. Tail, tail. Layouts. Default. Is single it? Whoops, that's pagination. Probably not in there. Content. Oh, yep, there you go. So that's where that is. So there's our header, there's our title. Single header, single title. Oh, so I could put it in the title. I don't know what else the title gets used for though. I'm just gonna put it right here. Um, where's I gotta go? Yeah, we'll just put it right under, right there. So here's our summary. So here is our edit line. I'm just gonna paste it in and see what happens. Yeah, that was pretty easy. <coughs> That's awesome. I spent longer deciding whether or not I was gonna do it than it took to actually do it. Uh, where's that gonna go? Wait, oh, that should've moved. I thought. Single header, single title. Weird. Oh well, whatever. It's fine. Um, let's put a break there. Just get a little extra space. Probably two breaks, right? 
because the first one doesn't do much. There we go. Uh, sweet. Now I can bump it into a thing, look at it, edit it. Uh, oops. Uh, well, so I'd have my, hang on. When I'm working on my larger screen and not like cramp down into um, what you thing, it would launch, I could make my edits, save it, and then see it just change. So like, and then save it, done. If I need to jump back into it, edit again, pull it up, again, go, go. That is the speed at which I like to be able to do things. So let's close up that out. What happened? Okay, there we go. And I can come here, I can do that, it's this way. Oh yeah, when I edit, it automatically, from here, it automatically switches the page over for me to the page that I'm working on. This is great, this is why you should, this, this is good, this is worth having. I will probably write this up at some point and make a little experiment, or a little demo of it. Or I'll just do a video, like a straight video, not just a stream. Um, sweet. Uh, M. Yeah, edit button. Working on dev only and on single pages. Cool. I'm excited about that. I am excited about that. Why are you over there? You come here. Uh, probably because that's there and that's there. That's probably why. If I close that and then try a new one, does that come there? Yeah, cool. Uh, oh, and it's so fast. Like, I mean, here, we'll go to a page that I haven't been to before. 12, ready? Boom. So fast. Uh, okay, so now what I want to do is try and figure out how to make... Um, YouTube videos responsive. Let's see if there's one in here. Yep. So here's one right where it's just it it's got the it should have the full width of the page. And then also if I'm going down, uh, well actually oh the cool thing is let's see what this does. So I just found this today. No. Yeah, look at that. So on Safari you can do. Command Control R and see previews for different size devices. So like, actually, if I refresh that, does it do anything? Yeah. So that's see that blows out. What I want to have is a responsive uh, call, so that the video works in there, um, and it works at you know different sizes, and it goes up to the width of the page, or, or sorry, to the width of my container, um, which at some point I may even make it like go, if you've got the full width, just go full width. Um, but so that's what I wanna try and figure out how to do. Uh, Cause I don't, I don't like this and I don't like it that it's not full there. So that's what we're gonna work on. Um, first thing we're gonna work on though is I'm gonna get some water uh, cause I'm out of water and be right back. Um, so, BRB. Uh, I'll be right back. Also, I'm gonna move the desk down so that I don't have to stand anymore.
All right. Oh, I'll stand, <clears throat> stand for a while. <sighs> cool. So I just bit the side of my uh, cheek. All right, what time we got? 1.42. Start. Responsive. YouTube. All right, so here's the thing. Is I remember seeing Hugo YouTube. Hugo trailer. This is not helpful. Hugo YouTube shortcut. Aha. Strip codes, YouTube. Give me YouTube. I know there's one in here. Strip codes, built in figure, source, target, alt, caption, height, width, figure, just highlight, which I spent a bunch of time on the other day and made some cool stuff with. Instagram. What else we got? Param. Tweet. Vimeo. And I'm guessing YouTube. Embeds a responsive video player on YouTube. The only ID is required. Okay. This may be super simple if this is what it sounds like. Uh, let us find a post to work on. Oh, so you know how I can find a post? I can go here. I can go here. How do I get out of that? Uh, which one had one? This one? I think this one had one. That one did have one. This is a test. YouTube. Let's put this in here. Let's see what happens. This may be the easiest piece of code I've ever had to do. Yep, look at that, fits. Well, that was easy. Okay, so now what I need to do is write a script <laughs> that goes and finds all my YouTube links and uh, flip some down. 1.45, done. Oops, uh, where's the actual short code? Oh, autoplay true, look at that. What's that? Uh, why is that? What's, oh, I'm hitting the, no? What the hell happened? Just at some weird breakpoint? What's going on? There we go. Let's read through this. Copy YouTube. Yeah, so YouTube, only video ID is required, right? Example, there you go. Automate start play, but autoplay true. Remember that you can't mix name and unnamed parameters, so you need to assign the yet unnamed video ID of your parameter, okay? To the parameter ID. Using preceding you know, the following HTML we added to runner's website. Diff style, position, bottom padding. Let's look at that. Oops, you guys couldn't see that up there, could you? Oh, you could. Uh, let's grab that, just so we can see it. 
Position, relative. Yeah, so it actually just throws the style directly in there, which is awesome. I don't totally understand all this stuff, like style, position, absolute, top left with 100. Like, I, I need to look that stuff up at some point. I don't get it. Overflow hidden, uh, like all this stuff, I just don't, I don't know. But it puts a div in and then it puts it out to the thing. Um, that's super cool. Uh, so let's do this. Maybe so we can do. that or that I'm gonna put in that one just because it's the same sweet uh, so now here's the question Here, the question becomes is it worth writing a little script to go through and find all these I don't have that many videos on there And like, I'm not sure, well. Like it wouldn't be that bad to do, but like. I don't know that, that. Cause what you, what you, what you could do. This assumes that every time I've done this, I've embedded it from an iframe, but like, that's not, or I've pulled the embed code directly from YouTube, but I, and I know that I've done that over the past few weeks, but there may be other ones that are back there that I haven't done. So really what I should do is just deal with them manually, basically. Um, like it's, this is one of those where it's probably not worth writing a script to do it. Um, Cause let's see, so let's go into content. Uh, what is L? So I know, so grep, case insensitive, recursive, and then is this gonna work? Oh, that was it, previous, next. File with matches. Only the names of files containing selected matches are written out to standard output. Okay, so it just it just shows you the file. So yeah, I knew I, like I knew what this command like this is my go-to grab in real life is what, the way that I think about it. Um, search for a string, and then search everywhere down in that directory. Yeah, there's a bunch, but like, and so let's just do this. Pipe that to word count dash L for lines. Oh, 82. That's a bunch. But like, Oh yeah, see this, this actually isn't a link. Oh, so it, let's try. So I think we need to do, well you can do dot, which is any character, but I think you would really want to do slash dot, ha, huh, slash dot, dot com. 70, okay, let's see what that list is. Cause I got a feeling Um, here, Vegas and Bama. Oops. Yeah, see, that's an old way that I had that. It's just a markdown link sitting in there. So it's kind of going to be all over the place. It's not, yeah, it's not going to be worth writing a script. So I'll just, I'll just deal with those manually. Um, I can deal this one manually right now. Uh, I'm gonna leave autoplay on. No, should we have autoplay on this or no? Maybe, I don't know, we'll figure that out on a case by case basis. 
Um, probably not on the stream notes, but probably on things like my journal stuff and my vlog, which is coming soon. That's the reason I'm doing this stuff is to get to the vlog. Um, oh, that's awesome. Uh, yes, yeah, so my site, my site's now, I mean, that makes it responsive, right? Because everything else was... Whoops. That's killer. Um... Yeah, and then just to re-verify. Yeah, if you put it on an iPhone, it's responsive there too. That's so cool. All right, so now, that was super cool. <laughs> Made some progress today. Let's do this. Uh, let's see what's on our checklist, or on our ideas list. Why does that look weird? Okay. Make YouTube dynamic. All right, let's go ahead and move those suckers down. I need to write strike across all those at some point, but I'll do that offline. Move date under headline on the Hugo site. I commit to Hugo deploy. Set up Hugo site to edit buttons for posts that don't show up, oh, so we did that. These aren't strictly in order, but they're close. Uh, data and headlines I get make PHP to create new pages with different templates. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I actually moved that down some. Here, right here. Whatever. Uh, get tags working. Not there yet. Put the first tag for each search under the title. Okay. Make a Twitch YouTube downloader. Add a logo, social media, or description. Go process speed up clips of live. Finally, just getting photos responsive. Probably sized. Mm, maybe. We got sizing in YouTube videos and make responsive. We already did that. That was already down there. Sometimes these new get too good. Uh, figure out how to drop file content in year directories. Yeah, I want to do that at some point. Put our first launch pad. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Headlines under Hugo site. Yeah, let's try that. So this is, I, I know how to do this. It's just gonna be playing with a little CSS. Um, site so what I'm looking to do is this I want this underneath instead of above um, and I want a little closer like kind of tucked up underneath there uh, so what we saw earlier was layouts nope was con no themes One of these days I'm gonna remember that uh, that layouts in there is what throws me so index that renders pages 404 four, right uh index introduction no which one is the one is that it catalog oh render summary yeah so it's in the summary Faults. I still don't have my head around this directory structure. We know this because this is where our edit button is, but just to see it. 
there's all the junk. So easy enough to drop Drop it below. Just to, to be a matter of style sheet stuff. I should move it down. Yep. Uh, so let's make the edit button smaller first. Um, all right, now we have to just dig through some CSS, uh, which is nope. Assets, CSS, tail, there you go. Uh, CSS is not my strong suit. Syntax layout, base, category, like I don't have, oh, so actually what we can do is if I inspect this element, shows me where all the CSS is coming from. This is cool. So, I'm just looking for, so this is the href. I have a font size listed anywhere? I don't see a font size. Font size 16, which is coming from base. Okay, so, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna give it its own thing. S-U-M-M-A-R-I, edit button. Now here's where people are gonna yell at me. I don't know if this is the proper way to do this. Um, I'll see if it actually does anything first. Not do anything. Oh, because we need a dot. Oops. Try that. Oh, there you go. See, smaller. So I get it at 11. Uh, cool. So now. I want to get them. I want to get them tucked up closer. I also want a little more spacing below here. We'll work on that. So let's inspect. So that H three is a date. I'm trying to figure out where all that space is coming from. Which one's got catalog item? Okay. So does that have where's that computed or the yeah, there you go. So why does it have Where's all that space coming from then? It's, shouldn't it show me a bunch of space there? Styles. Um, font size, font weight. Color, okay, color. None of this is telling me, oh, maybe that's just the default, but like, shouldn't it show the color, shouldn't it show the height for the bounding box or whatever it is? Hmm. I 
that normally. Can I edit this? I actually don't know what I would do. Padding. Twelve. Yeah, shit, sure. okay. Got it. Got in line. That didn't change anything. How do you snug those up? Where's H3? That was H3, wasn't it? Margin? Messing with it, but how is it? Like, why can't I butt those things up to next to each other? See if it's worth having the extra fonts pulled down. Oh, yes, line height. What was that? Yeah, look at that. Okay. What is this? Whoa. So that's for everything. Interesting. Is that turn off? Yeah, okay. So that's, so it's doing a everything line height, one and a half. So I could override that with... Right? And then where's time? Where's time? Catalog time and style CSS. Why did that get tighter? edits in there too. Let me see if that's what's keeping that up. Let's take that out for a minute. Pix on it? Pixels on it? No. Why can't I make those mush up?
Ausweis. Ja. Oh, da ist der. Catalog Title Draft. Definitely moves it up. But I want it closer. Well, let me see if see line height normal here. That should Shouldn't that override this 1.5? What's the... It's in the H3. Oh, it's in the A. I got it. So, where could we do this? Still, the hell? Okay, I can't change that. Um, okay, that worked. That's actually pretty, okay, I'm okay with that. Where's that A? Wait, I'm in a different place now, what's going on? Oh, there it is. Okay, so that that can go away. We can delete that. But see, that still pushes. So, oh, wait a minute. So what? Okay, so the H3 got it. And then the time needs it, too because I'm turning it off for everything. All right, I'm gonna mess with this here. Where was this? So, but the A was in the base. Oh, but that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted the H3. Where's the H3? Probably in the base too. Base, so where's this H3? That doesn't make sense. Where's my H's? Where's my H's? Line height one. Okay, why is that struck? Because, mm, why is that struck? Uh, 
title, understand, CSS. That was boring, sorry, but whatever. A. Did that help? Yes, that moved him closer. So let's put this back to normal. One. But then why isn't it already doing the thing it was supposed to do? So it's over on that. Here it is. Okay, maybe that was. I thought it was closer than that. All right, let's find the time thing. Let's click on it. There you go. Catalog time. So, catalog. Mm, time. Closer just a minute ago. Should go there then. Because I got it closer, right? I can't tell. Yeah, I think it did. Oops. So that's normal. That's one. I can't tell if I got closer or not. Oh, what is this? H3. Oh, it's user style. Come on. Can't do nothing with that. What is this? Can't do anything with that. I don't get it. I do not get it. We got one there. One right there. What is margin block start? Trying to find the logical block start of a margin of an element, which marks a physical margin depending on the element's writing mode, directionally in text.
Uh -huh. I think we may have found it. Or inherited no defense on my own model. Larger blocks start 20 pixels. Uh, that may very well be it. Margin block start one EM, margin supply end. Okay, so H3, how do I copy that? Uh, let's see if that's what's going on. Where's our H3s again? Margin block end zero. picks crap hard box out zero picks oh we want end though right Closer. I want it like five pixels up closer. CSS move lines closer. Margin, a negative margin on it. closer now. Maybe it was a little closer. Uh, okay, so... site now. I'm so... Oh yeah, so it's, it is pretty close up there. I gotcha. Um, here's an idea. Why don't I just hard overwrite all that stuff? Catalog draft title, right? Margin. And style that CSS. Oops, not what I meant to do. sizing border box. So 
So the total with an element is calculated. Content box. Content box is border solid and then padding. Border box. See the that stuff's all like right down there. go straight into it. Catalog item, where's catalog item? Oh, padding, what's that? Hmm. Crap. Style the CSS, where's that? Space is coming from. Style CSS, style CSS. It's all style. Why is it all style? A minute ago it was telling me. There we go, catalog. It seems like that should overwrite, but it's not. This feels like where it is. So, catalog, title, draft.
Wait a minute. Did I ever click on this? Color. Off-family font. Media. Padding. Padding. Why? It's all screwed out. Try something different. Uh, I'm gonna take this out of the H3 for a minute. Actually, I'm gonna take it here for a second. Oh, should be dip. So I go the full width. All right. CSS make to text lines touch. All right, you know what? Uh... Oh, actually, you know what I should do is just do, um... What's it, JS Fiddle? the other one css tricks now what's the other oh i guess jsl is gonna work i thought there was another one too oh there's run h3 i should have done this a while ago test uh header time this run css h3 Margin zero. 
Is there a hotkey for run? Time. March in. Zero. Okay, controller. So how do you... CSS overlap text. We don't actually want to overlap it, but I want to move it up. CSS tricks, maybe. No. The forms ran from 2008 to 2020 are now closed. Oh, where CSS tricks is closing down. All right, most important functions here is the position and elements. Smart defining top left, right, bottom position. And ZX are just a few of the major players in CSS. Position. By using the above spacing properties and the Z index layering property, we can make your elements overlap each other. Element one, element two. Wish we could see this right here and play with it. Um, but we can do this and play with it. Uh, we can do this and play with it. Where is our JS fiddle? So I'm just gonna grab all this. Maybe you can see that. That's the CSS. We're gonna grab his stuff here. And we're gonna run it. Okay, we see the same thing. So I only need two of them, so I'm gonna get rid of a couple of them. Right? Element, element dash one. Oh, so he, oh, 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 oh. So element is the class and then element one Z index, I don't understand position absolute yet. Um, we're gonna play with that though. Z index, margin 30. CSSC index. C index CSS property sets the Z order of position elements and its descendants are flex items. Overlapping elements with the larger Z index cover those with the smaller Z index, right? For positioned box, that is one with a position other than static, the Z index property is what's for the stack level by the box from one. Okay, syntax. Keyword value. Integers, negative integers, little priority, okay. Auto or integer, right? Auto or integer. Formal definition. Visually layering elements. Thank you. 
Put gold boxes above green boxes and dash box. Background gold, what, 60 left, 60. So I need to know position absolute. That's what I really need to know. What does position absolute do? So an element is positioned in a document. The top left and right element properties determine the final location of position elements. Okay, that makes sense. Static, relative, absolute. Oh. In this deck, you can control the position of the yellow box. To see the effect of sticky position, select position sticky option on this and scroll this container. Absolute goes, what's relative to 40? Single here, it's static. The element is positioned according to the normal flow of the document. Top right, left one is going to have no effect. This is default value, okay? And then offset relative to the, relative, offset relative to itself based on the Oh, okay. The offset does not affect the position of any other elements. Thus, the space given for the element in the page layout is the same as if the position were static. This value creates a new stacking context when the value Z index is not auto. Its effect on table, group table, or tables is undefined. Absolute element is referring from the normal flow of the document and no space is created for the element in the page layout. It's positioned relative to the closest positioned ancestor, if any, otherwise it is placed relative to the initial containing block. And the final position is determined by the values top left and right, okay. The values for your stacking document, Z index, fix the elements removed from the normal document flow and no space is created. I think I'm gonna make my own tutorial about this just so I can figure this out. Um, the element is removed from normal document flow and no space is created for the element on the page layout. This position relative is a containing block established by the viewport, except when one of the ancestors has a transform. Perspective or filter. Probably set something on this. In which case the ancestor behaves as the containing block. No to reverse. The values new staging concept for an element sticky position above the norm according to normal flow to document and then offset relative nearest scrolling ancestor the containing block. Based on the values left right, the offset does not affect the certain element. The value is always new stacking current. Okay. But I think let's look at relative. Cause what so I think what this is saying is if we have that time. It's gonna it's gonna go in its normal position, but if we tell it to do position relative and then move it up a little bit, that may work. Let's actually try it with our CSS stuff in our CSS fiddle, which is so that's this one. Yeah, so he they're doing absolute position here, which I don't think we want to do. Or I'm sure there's a way to do that, but I think. Position relative, top, minus 20. Run. Ah, come on! Okay. What does that do? Also does nothing. Crap.
Let me put this in a div. Really thought we might have something there. Now, how did that move the test? Oh, because it's not in the flow when you do that. It takes that out of the flow. So, like, yeah. But then... Why did that change anything? I don't understand. Top left, bottom right, Z have no effect. Oh, maybe you gotta do it like pixels. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Margin doesn't matter. Right? H3, you know that matters. All of a sudden it matters. Okay, doesn't. That took a lot of time to figure out. And I should be able to drop the divs here too, right? Just to get the minimum amount of code. I like that better. That's cool. I learned something new today. Um, let's see if I have a JS Federal account. I used to. So, <laughs> well, that's how you learn. All right. So we can get rid of this. We can bring this back into play. All right, let's see what our site looks like. Wow, that's a bunch of tabs. People who know CSS were screaming at me the whole time. I didn't know it. Uh, cool, so now, catalog time. Try 10 pixels. That's probably still too much. Oh, no, that's looking pretty good. Nine. Eight. Bingo. That's what I've been looking for. Whew. Uh, and now let's bring the edit up. Actually, maybe I should just do this, just because it'll be easier to do. 
summary. Here's the edit. Um, uh, I was thinking I could just put it in here, but I actually don't want to put it in the time because the time is a thing. But I guess that doesn't super matter because it's not really going to the prod. I like that look. I like that a lot better. Cause like this one with the dates over and the line are just, it's the wrong, it's wrong. It's not awful, it's just wrong. Uh, and then this should look pretty sharp when you get down to like this and without that, that little edit there. I think that's gonna be pretty good looking. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, edit some class summary button. I don't know. Summary edit button. I have to take that out and just do that. Oh, too big. That's fine. Um, That's cool. Still works, right? Yup. I really like that. It, I could push it. Oh, it's pushed off just a little bit. That was bugging me. Why does it have? But I didn't know how to fix that now. Uh, yeah, why is it pushed off just a little? It's got some, oh, I probably did some weird stuff somewhere back in there. Um, bit through it. But, cause it's, you know, it's over just a touch. I'm not even gonna mess with that though. I'm just gonna do it here. Oh, there's my summer every button. Uh, what's the time? It's title. Where's time? Gotta get make it the same. Come on, family. Maybe. Oh, well, whatever. What was he gonna do? I was gonna do the thing that looked like finding. What did I just move? The time, position relative. So left, four, three pixels. That moved it. Maybe just two. There you go. That's lined up. Or it's mostly lined up. It's close enough. Uh, and one more. Actually, what happens if we, oops, I went the wrong way. How do we do this? That looks weird. But what if we do this, and then we do, now I'm just playing with the design, right? Um, this. Hmm.
Eh, that'll be fine for now. Um, cool. Okay, that I think is gonna wrap us. Uh, that was long and boring there in the middle or at the end, but I learned a little bit about absolute and relative. Like I've seen some CSS stuff like that before, but I've never done it or known about it. Um, so I just learned a lot about it. Uh, Cause like when I first started doing HTML, CSS didn't exist. And as CSS grew and grew and grew, I was, I was doing less and less work, development stuff, or, yeah, development, whatever, web stuff. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know it. Uh, we should pen that here. Maybe. That took an hour. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, cool, so, let's see if we should put any of these other things in here. Um, Because really all we did was come up with that little piece of code. Um, oh yeah, let's deploy it so we can actually see it. Yeah, I'm really surprised that the when you hover over the text, it doesn't show you the full... Like, so we hovered over the H3, it it had a block that stopped here, and then we hovered over the time, it had a block that stopped, stopped there, but there was white space in between that never overlapped. It seems kind of, it surprises me that there's not like a, the view of when you mouse over stuff and it showed you the kind of the surface area didn't cover that. Um, who knows? Uh, right? I don't understand that, but like, that's just, probably people who do this stuff all the time, like, yeah, of course, that's just how it works. Um, I did not know that. So what should happen is I should be able to go HD for Hugo Deploy. This came up recently. Um, I'll have to look through that and see which uh, where that's coming through. Uh, it may have already updated because I do that thing. It has not yet updated. Oh. That's bad. Probably still updating, maybe? Still clearing? Uh, that doesn't look like that. It, the spacing changed. There we go. I was just freaking out there a little bit. Um, yeah, I could add a little more padding up here. But by and large, I like that. It's not, there's nothing stylish about it. It's just black and white. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very happy with that. That'll work. Um, cool. Very cool. I dig it. And... No, I don't think I did. I didn't put any of the links up for um, YouTube yet. Uh, that's okay. Uh, cool. This is... I'm excited about this. I like this a lot. I, I'm taking my sight more and more. Um, oh, wait. We still have the red ones, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Ah, uh, sweet. All right, that'll do it. Y'all have a good one. Uh, take care, be kind, we'll see you around, and uh, be kind, later.